Hello friends, welcome to this lecture of transportation engineering. So today we will be discussing the basic concepts of highway geometric design. As I have already explained to you, the transportation engineering or the highway engineering can be broadly divided into three sub parts, highway geometric design, highway pavement design, and transportation engineer, uh, planning and traffic engineering. So see, the first phase is the highway geometric design. So in geometric design, why do we, what do we study? We study about the camber, we study about cross slopes, we study about right of way, we study about uh, stopping side distance, overtaking side distance, super elevation, extra widening, valley curves, summit curves, gradients. All these are the geometric elements of the road that we study in this particular topic. Okay, uh, so I'll be sharing my screen with you people. So, uh, highway geometric design. So, geometric design of highway deals with the following elements. Okay, there are several elements of highway geometric design. It mainly deals with the cross section elements. So, what are the cross section elements? The camber is an example of cross section element. We will study in detail about camber in the following slides. Side distance considerations like stopping side distance, overtaking side distance. A stopping side distance should always be available for a driver. What is the stopping? What is a stopping side distance? That is the distance that is available for the driver in front of him or her, which is clearly visible. So that if there is any obstruction, if the driver has to apply the brakes, the vehicle stops without colliding with any other vehicle or other obstruction. That particular distance available in the vision of the driver is stopping side distance. Okay, we'll study in detail in the next classes. We study about horizontal alignment details, vertical alignment details. Okay, we study about horizon, what are the horizontal alignment details? Super elevation, extra widening are horizontal alignment details. What are vertical alignment details? These are the summit curves, vertical curves, gradients are the vertical alignment details. We study about the intersection elements. What are the intersection elements? Whenever two roads intersect, okay, you may have traffic signs over it. If there is a very important road and there is a another smaller road intersecting in that important road, what do we observe? We observe that there is a great separation in such kind of situations. What is great separation? Construction of flyovers or road overbridges. Okay, so all these things we will be studying under highway geometric design. So friends, design, control and criteria. The geometric design of highways depends on several design factors. Okay, some of the most important design factors are the design speed. So what do you understand by design speed? Design speed is actually the speed, the optimum speed for which the road is designed. Okay. A national highway may be designed for a speed of 100 kilometers per hour and a village road may be designed for a speed of 30 kilometers per hour. Depending upon the road, depending upon the traffic, depending upon the importance of the road, the design speed is actually given. Topography. What is the topography? Whether it is a mountainous area, it is a plain area, all this plays a very important role. Traffic factors. How much amount of vehicles are coming? What are the traffic signs, whether there is traffic sign is there or whether there is a great separation is there. These are the traffic factors. Design hourly volume and capacity. Volume and capacity are also some very important traffic factors. Environmental and other factors, whether there is a, whether there is one road which is going uh, alongside a national uh, wildlife sanctuary. So those kind of roads will again have to have some specific conditions. Okay. So moving forward, what do we understand by cross slope? Okay, so see cross slope is the slope of a particular area. Okay, sometimes even the camber is referred to as cross slope, but camber is a little bit different than cross slope. Camber is of a particular road while cross slope is of a particular area. Okay, see if you see this diagram, it is a very self-explanatory diagram. But do you observe for 100 meter horizontal, there is a rise of 80 meters vertical. So this is the cross slope of the area, not of the road. For example, one area can, if it is having a cross slope of 80%, we can say that this is a mountainous region. If it is having a cross slope of less cross slope, suppose 2%, 3%, we can say that it is a 
plane area okay so depending upon the cross slope the terrain of the of a particular area may be determined what is terrain let us move to the next slide so if it is a plane terrain the cross slope is 0 to 10 percent if it is rolling terrain cross slope is higher 10 to 25 percent mountainous more high up to 60 percent if it is more than 60 percent the terrains are classified as steep terrain so moving to the next slide one of the very important parameters of uh, geometric design is friction okay so friction plays a very important role in designing any particular uh, geometric design or whether it is pavement design also so even very high amount of friction is not good and even very less amount of friction is not good there is should be always adequate amount of friction friction between the vehicle tire and pavement surface determines the operating speed and distance requirements in stopping and accelerating the vehicles when a vehicle negotiates a horizontal curve the lateral friction developed counteracts the centrifugal force and thus governs the safe operating speed see when a vehicle is going through a horizontal curve there is a lateral friction okay if that lateral if there is an absence of this lateral friction what will happen whenever a vehicle is overcoming a horizontal curve if there is a less lateral friction then the centrifugal force will overpower the vehicle and the vehicle will overturn many times in such kind of curves you might have seen the vehicle did not collide with any other vehicle that the vehicle did not collide with anything but the vehicle overturned why because the driver did could not decrease the speed and the centrifugal force what pulled the vehicle and that is why there is the overturning of vehicle you can very well uh, ex uh, understand it by recalling your experience while you have ridden a, while you were riding a bicycle or while you were in a bike what do you do we move your body like this why because to counteract the centrifugal force as your uh, counteract the centrifugal force by moving your body similar way the friction the lateral friction there is an important role in counteracting the centrifugal force one of the important thing is slip and skid what do we mean by slip when a tire is rotating but there is no forward movement that is called slip when you apply the brakes okay there is no rotation of tire but the vehicle is moving forward that type of movement is known as skid already you people know, have heard it in your day to day life slip and skid but don't use it inter their these terms are not interchangeable these are having its own perfect meaning meaning for slip there is more rotational movement and less longitudinal movement while in skid there is more uh, longitudinal movement but there is less movement of the rotation okay so what are the different factors that affects the friction okay factors affecting friction the types of pavement whether the pavement is a concrete pavement or bituminous pavement or art surface that is affecting the friction the condition of the pavement whether the pavement is wet or dry whether it is smooth whether it is um, oil spilled or whether it is having dry sand on the pavement that will affect the pavement very easy to understand the type and condition of the tire whether the tires are very new you see that the new tire car is having tires with very good treads what happens that is having very good friction as soon as you uh, as the car becomes old the what tire wears out and the uh, tire surface becomes smooth reducing the friction okay so the difference affects the friction the load and the tire pressure affects the friction speed of the vehicle affects the friction temperature of the tire and the pavement also affects the friction okay so next there are two different types of coefficient of friction one is the longitudinal coefficient of friction another one is a lateral coefficient of friction we consider a longitudinal coefficient of friction when we consider the movement of the vehicle in a straight road if the movement is vehicle is moving in a straight road suppose this is the vehicle and it's moving in a straight road then when it will apply the brakes that friction that is occurring in between the surface this friction is the longitudinal friction but the same vehicle when it is moving in a horizontal curve like this so there will be a friction in the lateral direction this direction this friction is known as the lateral coefficient of friction so mind it 
longitudinal coefficient of friction is the is equal to 0 0.35 it actually ranges between 0 0.35 to 0 0.40 but uh, it is approximately 0 0.35 the lateral friction is 0 0.15 so see, these are very important values. These will be very much useful for many kinds of numericals. Many of you will be interested to appear in competitive exams like GATE in future. So if you remember this kind of values, this will be very much important. So please, dear students, I request all of you to remember these values now itself. Do not think that I will revise the longitudinal coefficient of friction, lateral coefficient of friction, later on. No, you just pause the video and learn it that this is longitudinal coefficient of friction 0 0.35 lateral coefficient of friction 0 0.15 one more request if anyone is here listening to the video without your pen and notebook my kind request please pause the video here bring your notebook bring your pen and start studying with pen and notebook let us move forward to the next slide what is camber as i already said that we'll study camber Camber is nothing but the cross slope that is provided on the road. It is not the slope of the region, it is the slope of the road. See, uh, when the road is there, the upper part of the road is slightly raised to the edges of the road. The middle part of the road is slightly raised to the uh, edges of the road. Why? Because the, so that the water can move along this, the road and reach the drains. This phenomenon of raising the upper part, this phenomenon of providing the camber, this slope is known as camber. Okay, this slope is known as camber. Why do we provide camber? To drain off the water. How do we represent camber? We represent camber as one in N. That means one vertical to N horizontal. Okay, one in 20. That means for 20 meter uh, horizontal, there will be one meter raised in vertical or we represent that in, in how do we represent it we represent it in percentage suppose five percentage that means what five in hundred five in hundred means what one in twenty same so we can represent as one in twenty or five percentage the camber depends on two different two important aspects one is the type of pavement surface and another one is the amount of rainfall there are three different shapes of camber one is parabolic one is straight line and another one is combination of straight line and parabolic dear students you might be thinking that if this straight line is like this in this manner the vehicle may overturn the vehicle will collapse okay so please let me tell you one thing this is the camber is not provided like a hill or like a mountain the amount of camber the race that is provided is very very less this type of diagrams we draw just to give an exaggerated view of camber for your better understanding Okay, dear students. So these are certain values of camber which are recommended by Indian Road Congress. See, uh, for light rainfall, for cement concrete road, the uh, camber is least one in 60 or 1.7 percentage. Okay. And uh, for uh, heavy rainfall and earth road, the camber is the highest, one in 25 or four percent okay so i hope uh, that you have understood all the concepts what is friction importance of friction factors affecting friction what is camber what is cross slope these are very very simple topics but really very very important dear students so before ending the session i have some assignment for you so i request all of you to go through this problem this is a very easy problem. You have to calculate the height of the crown. What do you mean by crown? The middle part of the road. The middle part of the road is raised. Why? Because of the camber. So if this is the slope provided, how much is the raise provided? Okay. You can very easily calculate by seeing the, by seeing, uh, sorry, by seeing the, this table. In this table, uh, you will get the values of camber. So use these values to obtain the, uh, rise that is provided if it is a 3.8 meters the water bound pigment road 3.8 meters means the total width is 3.8 meters so from middle to edge how much will be the width it will be 1.9 meters so for 1.9 meter how much will be the vertical similarly if the width is 7 meters the half of the road will be 3.5 meters so for 3.5 meters how much is the rise provided okay so it's a very simple mathematics so with this we would like to conclude for now so i hope all of you have uh, understood these basic concepts of highway geometric design okay so with this thank you thank you so much